So ready your Bible, ready your notes, ready your heart kasi we're gonna hear the Word of God this afternoon as we continue on sa series natin na From the Inside. Again, pinag-uusapan natin no, yung series natin na to, From the Inside is how what it means to be part of a church, what is a church, and yung mga certain mindsets and perspective natin when it comes to church. I hope it is clear with all of us that when we talk about church, we are talking about the people. Not the place, not the venue, not the uh, facilities, but when we talk about the church, we are talking about the people or the gathered one. Meaning to say, you and I, yan, tignan mo yung katabi mo sa Zoom, katabi mo sa Zoom, yung window from your left and window from your from Silan, saan tumingin eh, no? <laughs> we are the church. You and I are the church. Tayong lahat na nandito sa uh, Zoom na to, we are the church. Since we know that the church is not the building, but the church is the people, the gathered one. Importante yon na malaman natin and we put that in mind that the church is the people of God because when we think about that, we will have the right perspective, the, the right expectation regarding church. Kasi kung iisipin natin na tao, people, yung nagko-compose sa isang church, we will have the right expectation and perspective when it comes to church. And last week, now we talk about the church. From the inside, the church, we still uh, experience suffering. Hindi tayo exempted na mag But the good thing is, as a part of the church, we could suffer together and see victory and hope through our suffering with Christ. And today, this afternoon, I'm going to talk about another realities and another truths that we need to be aware of and we need to live by as being part of the church. There are realities and truths sa uh, loob ng simbahan inside the church that we need to uh, be aware of and learn how to live by it because it will help us to grow and see the move of God in our lives. Today, we're gonna read from Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. If you have your Bible with you, you can uh, read it with me. Sundan nyo, I read it along, and as we uh, go on with the preaching, no? Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Uh, ito yung story of people of God inside the church that fail. People of God that did a wrongdoing people of God inside the church that has failure. Kasi, no, the reality is, as part of the church, you and I will experience and witness people failing inside the church. Even us, tayo mismo, individually, we will sometimes fail as we journey as a church. Hindi tayo exempted na magkamali at magfail even we are inside the church. So we will read from Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, and we'll hear the story of Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, let's read from verse 1 to 11. It says here, But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last and great fear came upon all who heard of it. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Verse 7 says here, After an interval of about three hours, his wife, Sapphira, came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, Tinanong din siya ni Peter, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And, and she said, Yes, for so much. But Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately, she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead, and they carried it out and buried her beside her husband. And a great fear came upon the whole church and upon 
all who heard of these things. Let's pray as we continue this preaching. Lord, we ask for your spirit even right now. Help us, Lord, to understand what it means, Lord, to be part of the church, the realities and the truths that we need, Lord, to be aware of and to need, Lord, to learn how to live by. Lord, we pray, Lord, by the story of Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, we will see who you are and what you can do in our lives. Holy Spirit, fill us so that we could understand your word this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yung binasa natin na verse, no? yung verse chap- yung Acts chapter 5, verse 7, 1 to 11, makikita nyo dyan, no? yung passage na yan, we will see, again, sabi ko nga, some of the realities and truths that are happening inside the church. Yes, realities and truths na nangyayari inside the church. And itong realities and truths na to, ay yung sabi ko nga, no? that we need to be aware of and live with live by as someone who is part of the church. Kailangan matutunan natin, malaman natin kung ano ba yung ibig sabihin or sinasabi ni Lord through this passage of scripture. And yung verse na to, uh, makikita nyo rito, no, yung, nag-start yung verse, in chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, it started with a conversation between Ananias and Peter. A conversation wherein it reveals the wrongdoing and failures that Ananias and his wife did. With this conversation, Peter and Ananias, makikita natin kung saan nagkamali si Ananias and his wife. Verse 1 to verse 4 says here, But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and with his wife's knowledge he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And it, and after it was sold, was it not your, at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. Some context and background lang with this story, no? Uh, the chapter before this verse, makikita natin that God himself uh, made or did a miraculous thing sa church na nandito sa Acts. No? They experienced the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, the power of God, the salvation of God as a church. So yung church na grow experiencing all the goodness of the God in their life. And as a church, they decided with one heart and one soul, na kung ano yung meron sila, what they have, they is doesn't belong to them. Hindi nila pang magmamayari yung kung anong meron sila. And with generous heart, what they did is they sold all their properties and all the proceeds, yung mga tinita nila, they gave it and laid it to the apostles. Then the apostle will give it and distribute it to those who are in need. So ito yung nangyayari dito sa verse na Come, Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. Story nila. Yes, they also sold their properties and nagbigay din sila sa mga apostol. But, sabi doon, they kept back something for themselves and they lied about it. Yes, everyone is selling all their possession and giving the proceeds to the apostles so that they could distribute it into the need. To the needy, itong ananasin sa papaira, ang ginawa nila, yes, nagbenta sila, minenta nila yung property sila, but nagtago sila para sa sarili nila. Now the question is, mali ba na magtira para sa sarili? Yan. Sagutin nyo nga yan sa sarili nyo. Mali ba na magtira para sa sarili? Baka na na ano nyo na to, no? Na rinig nyo na yan sa pag nagpa-advise kayo, na broken hearted kayo. Yan. Magtira ka naman sa sarili mo. Huwag mo ibigay yung 100% mo. Yan. Give, kakep back for yourself. Huwag mo ubusin. Huwag mo isagad. Uh, sa lahat yung pag uh, nagbigay ka no so mali ba na nagbigay or nag kept back sila or nagtabi sila for themselves it does it's not wrong no to keep back for yourself but sa kwento ni Ananias and Sapphira ang pagkakamali nila the failure that they did is this yung word na kept back doon it means in secret and dishonest way Nagtabi sila, they kept back in secret and with dishonest 
way. In short, nagsinungaling sila not only kay Peter, but also kay God. The wrong thing that they did was they lied to Peter and especially to God. What is the reality that we can see in this passage of Scripture? It's here. It's this. People inside the church or people in the church have the tendency to fail. You and I have the tendency to fail. You and I can and will fail. There are times that we will fail even if we are inside the church, even if we are part of the church. Sometimes kasi meron ka tayong gantong mindsets, no? Na if you are part of the church, dapat perfect ka na. Yan, taas kamay kung sino perfect dito. Paturo naman kung paano maging perfect. Dapat di ka na nagkakamali pag nasa church ka. Dapat okay lahat ng kilos mo. Dapat hindi ka na nagkakasala when you are inside the church. Which is wrong. Why? Because none of us is perfect. We are all human. Yung imahe nga natin no, na series, it, uh, nilatag natin doon kung ano yung itsura of us being distorted because of sin. In short, we will experience witness and make failures. We will experience failures, we will witness failures, and especially, we will make failures. Sana hindi nyo naman sinasadya magkamali. No? But as people of God, we have tendency to fail. We will, can, fail. But in the case of Ananias and Sapphira, no, the reason why they failed and did what they have done is because of this. Sa verse 3, makikita natin, bakit ba nila ginawa yun? Why they lied to Peter and to, whole, to God and the Holy Spirit? Bakit sila nagsinungalit? Verse 3 says there, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? Verse 3, makikita natin, the reason behind the action of Ananias and Sapphira is because Satan filled their hearts to lie and sin against God. They failed because they were filled by Satan. And with this verse, no, we can see another reality, another truth that we need to be aware of. The reality of evil and the enemy. Let me repeat that. The reality of evil and the enemy. Yes, totoo ang kasalanan. Sin is real. Totoo ang demonyo. Devil is real. Totoo na pwede tayong matempt. Temptation is there in the corner. At yun yung dahilan kung bakit tayo nagkakasala, why we are doing sin, falling into sin, kahit parte na tayo ng isang simbahan. The reality of evil and the enemy. Kaya nga, no, you, will, you will hear stories. no, People inside the church, people part of the church, whether a church leader, a church member, a volunteer, someone you are look, looking up inside the church na magkakamali, na magkakasala, magagawa nila yung mga bagay that we don't imagine that they can do. For example, whether it's a sexual offense or immorality, kaya may mababasa tayo sa news no, that uh, a church leader committed sexually immoral things or someone who failed in their financial integrity, ginagamit yung resources ng simbahan in their own benefits, or someone who abused and have a wrong use of their power inside the church. Those are real stories. Those are real scenarios. Those are real circumstances that we hear and see inside the church. Let's go with us in our level. Go rin mismo, kahit ako. If we will admit and be honest to ourselves and to God, we fail. We sin. We are being tempted. Nagkakamali tayo. Nagagalit pa rin tayo. Still have pride. Nagsisinungaling pa rin tayo. May mga nagagawa pa rin tayo mga bagay that doesn't honor God. Whether it's lust, pride, anger, or lying. Because 
again, there's a reality of evil and the enemy. The enemy is still working up to this day. Even us, again, we still fail, tempted, and sin against God. Again, sabi ko nga, ano, sana naman wag mong uh, sinasadya. You don't eat, you don't do it, ano, no, na talagang blatantly or in your own decision. No? Sana, when you sin, uh, again, you still have that conviction that you are belong to God. Again, with this reality, no, with the reality of evil and the enemy, may dalawang extreme na dapat, uh, na minsan napapaniwalaan natin. Too extreme that it's not, unhel- it's not healthy, no? unhealthy beliefs when it comes to this reality. Yung first, hindi totoo yung demonyo or the devil, hindi totoo si Satan, wala ng evil sa mundo or sa church kasi kasama naman natin si God because God is with us. Second extreme na pinaniniwalaan natin is this, sobrang powerful ng enemy, ng devil, ng Satan, and we have no power over him to overcome him and we are defeated and we are or should fear the enemy. Too extreme. Hindi, hindi mo ina-acknowledge the enemy or sobra kang natatakot si, sa enemy. These two extreme no, are unhealthy. If we believe yung first na hindi totoo yung enemy and the devil, ito yung mangyayari. We will fail to recognize and see yung mga temptations sa buhay natin, the things that He's doing in our lives. And sooner or later, we will uh, being filled. We are now being filled with Satan and because we are ignorant of His work in our lives. Pag inignore mo sa Satan, hindi ka aware na may enemy, magiging normal na lang sa'yo yung kasalanan. Kasi hindi, hindi naman totoo yung kaala, kalaban. Okay lang, okay lang itong ginagawa ko, hindi ko galing sa kalaban. You will fail to recognize what He's doing in your life. Second extreme na pag sobrang pinaniwala mo na powerful yung enemy, ano mayayari? We will fail to see the victory we have in Christ. We will fail to see that God is more powerful than Satan. Yung fear, pag pinaniniwala mo na mas malakas si Satan kaysa kay God, will have us paralyzed. The fear that we have because of the enemy will paralyze us. There's two extreme. Yes, there's a reality of evil and the enemy, which is what we see in the lives of Ananias and Sapphira. Nahita natin how the devil works in their lives. Yes, we have the tendency to do evil as human beings, and we have the tendency to fail as human beings, but it doesn't mean that God is not real. It doesn't mean that God has no power over our lives. It doesn't mean that God is more powerful than Satan. It doesn't mean that God, that we can be victorious in life. Yes, there's the reality of evil in the enemy, but God is real indeed. Yes, we will fail and be tempted by the enemy, but God himself is doing something in and through us and in our situation. Let me repeat that. Yes, we will fail and be tempted by the enemy, but God is doing something in and through us and in our situation. Mas malakas pa rin si God. God is more powerful than the enemy and the evil around us. Now, the question is, what should we do if we see, witness, and experience failures, evil, and sin inside the church? Anong gagawin natin pag nakita natin na nakaranas tayo ng kasalanan, ng kasamaan at failures inside the church? I'll read verses 5, 9, and 10 and we will see what should be our response when we see failures, evil, and sin inside the church. It says here, When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. And great fear came upon all who heard of it. Verse 9, But Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at, are at the door and they will carry you out. Immediately, they fell. she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. In this verse, we will see the character of God and what he can do. 
because when we experience failures, evil, and sin inside the church, we should acknowledge the character of God and what He can do. When the time comes, or ngayon pa lang, may nakikita ka ng failures, evil, sin, inside the church, in our community, in our church community, what we should do is acknowledge the character of God and what He can do. That God is powerful, that God can do something in and through us and in our situation. Because sometimes, no, we do things, may ginagawa tayo that, not, that are not allowed with the will of God because we failed to acknowledge His character, who He is, and what He can do. The reason why we do sin, sometimes because we don't acknowledge who God is, His character, and what He can do in our lives. We have this mindset, no, na loving naman si God, gracious naman si Lord, si Lord merciful naman si Lord, He can forgive me naman eh. Kaya okay lang na magkasala ako or gawin tong mga bagay na to kasi maiintindihan naman ako ni Lord. But with this verse, we can see not only that sin has consequences, but God is holy and just. Makikita natin yung character ni Lord, ni Lord and what He does in regards to sins. Let me share two verses that speaks of the holiness and the justice of God. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, this is who God is. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. Take note, no? every time that you will see a repetitive word in the Bible, yung inuulit na salita, which is in this case, the holy, 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 it means there's an emphasis to that word, may important that that word is important and the author wants you to focus on that word meaning to say holy 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 is the lord of hosts meaning that the author wants us to realize that god the lord is indeed holy psalms 89 verse 14 is talking about the justice of god righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne steadfast love and faithfulness go before you yes god is loving gracious merciful and can forgive your sin totoo yun Kapag mahal ang Panginoon at uh, tapat ang Panginoon, mabuti ang Panginoon, maawain ang Panginoon, but God Himself is holy and just. Ano ibig sabihin yun? It means that He will not allow sin not to be dealt with and evil to triumph. Hindi niya hayaang manaig at manalo yung kasalanan at kasamaan sa buhay natin and even inside the church and when we see and experience and witness sin failure evil inside the church again we should acknowledge god for who he is not for what we want him to be in our lives kasi minsan ginagawa nating genius si god lord ito yung prayer ko ito yung gusto ko gawin mo to para sa akin but god is not a genie that will bend to our wills and wishes but instead as people of god as church we should always be under His Lordship and will, not the other way around. Hindi, hindi tayo nasusunod. When you confess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, dapat si Lord yung nasusunod sa buhay mo. And with that reality that God is holy and just, now we can see the truth and the reality that God will deal with the failure, sin, and evil inside the church. God will and can do that. You don't need to fear the enemy, the evil inside the church because God can deal with those things. Kaya nga may tinatawag tayong church discipline if you will uh, heard that ano, no, term, church discipline. Ito yung ginagawa or ito yung way for us if, we're, if someone did something wrong, uh, fail in certain area of faith or church life, or nagkasala inside the church. No? As a church, bilang mga uh, tao na, ng Diyos, we help that person to be restored back to God. That means, uh, kunyari, nagkasala yung isang tao, umamin siya, nag-confess siya with that sin na nagawa niya. As a church, we help that person to be restored back first to God and to the community. Church discipline. It's one way of God dealing with the sin inside 
the church. But in the case of Ananias and Sapphira, it's something na God intended to show to the people of the church kung, uh, who he is and what he can do. Again, God is holy and just. Kasi may, may mga sin or failures or wrong, wrongdoings sa church that the only way to deal with it, to address it, is by letting that person go or exclude that person from the church. Again, no, with the premise na yung taong to, we offer church discipline, we offer that we want to help that person to be restored back to God, but that person doesn't want to be disciplined. That person doesn't want to be restored back to God. And that person continually and repeatedly doing evil sin inside the church. The only way for that person to be dealt with and addressed with is by letting that person go and exclude them. Ito yung mga example of things that uh, mangyayari or yung mga ginagawa ng isang tao that probably would exclude him from the church. Yung ito, if a person is not willing to undergo, again, the discipline, continue to disobey the scripture, Bible, sinasabi ni Lord, the violation of God's moral commandments, or there's unresolved relationships, relational sins, such as gossip, slander, anger, and abusive speech, pagpatuloy niyang ginagawa yun, which is nakakasira na ng church, nagkakaroon na ng division in the church, and false teaching on major doctrines, or disorderly conduct and refusal to work. God will deal those on with those things na ginagawa ng isang tao. Again, in Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13, it says here, remove the wicked man from among yourselves. There will be times that God will deal with those sins if that person doesn't want to be restored back to God. And surely, will God will do something about the situation around us, but it doesn't mean na doon na nagtatapos, no? doesn't end there. God wants us or God wants to do something inside us and deal with the evil and sin within us. Again, sabi ko nga, because church is the people of God, He wants and will do something in and through us. Mahikita natin sa verse 11, says here, and great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard of these things. Yan, sabi doon, and great fear came upon the whole church, yung church na nasa Acts, and upon all who heard of it, the people that heard what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. The church, upon witnessing the character and the power of God because of what happened, kung ano yung naging parusa kay Ananias and Sapphira, great fear came upon the church. In the book of Acts, no, dalawa yung ibig sabihin ng fear. Two things. Number one, yung fear na sinasabi doon is fear of God's displeasure and fatherly discipline. Again, fear of God's displeasure and fatherly discipline. Second fear na makikita nyo doon or yung ibig sabihin ng church sa Acts, no? yung fear sa Acts is this. Fear as godly o reverence, ibig sabihin ng reverence, deep respect for someone and devotion. Take those two in mind, no? yung meaning na yun. Fear of God's displeasure and fatherly discipline and fear as godly of reverence or deep respect for someone and devotion. What should we do when we experience failure, sin, and evil inside the church? Our response should be fear the Lord. Huwag kang matakot dun sa evil, sa pagkakamali na nangyari, but instead, as people of God, as part of the church, inside the church, we should fear the Lord. Just like what happened to the church in the Acts. They fear not the failure that Ananias and Sapphira did, but they fear the Lord. We should be, or we should continue to be in awe. Again, another meaning ng fear. No? To be in a godly awe, have a deep respect or reverence and devotion to God. Fear the Lord. Yes, failure and sin and evil inside the church should not stop us to fear the Lord and do what He called us to do. I hope na hindi tayo maparalyze ng failure, sin, and evil na nakikita natin or na naranasan natin inside the church. But instead, we should fear the Lord and continue to do what He has called us to do. As a church, we should live our lives with the fear of the Lord. 
because when we do that, we can continue to do things of God. We will continue to grow in our relationship with God and we will continue to obey Him in our life. Our lives again. Fear the Lord. Here are the some of the verses. No, when it comes to the fear of the Lord, Acts chapter nine verse thirty one says here. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. It multiplied. Talking about the church who has a fear of the Lord and growing because of the fear of the Lord. Second is Proverbs 14:27 says here the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that a one may turn away from the snares of death when we fear the Lord we will find life and we will uh, turn away from sin and the uh, evil in our lives again as a church as people who are inside the church our lives should be founded with the fear of the Lord ikaw at ako as a church We should fear the Lord. Fear the Lord, not the enemy, not Satan, not the thought of failing, but fear the Lord. And that's how the Church of Acts responded. They responded that way, no? They feared the Lord, and because of that, the word of the Lord continued to spread. People were added to the church. People are being restored back to God. People have a relationship with God, and the church continue to grow. Kung babasa niyo yung remaining verses of the chapter, ay yun ang yari because of the response when they experience evil, sin, and failures inside the church because they fear the Lord, not the failure, not what happened, not the enemy, not the evil, but they fear the Lord. The church continue to grow. The word of God continue to spread, and the works of God continue to go on. The same way with us, God will continue to work in and through us. He will continue to use you and me to use us to advance His kingdom. Again, no, there's the reality that you and I will fail. The reality of evil and the enemy, but again, it doesn't neglect the fact that God is doing something in and through us and His church. At the end of the day, no, as I end. It's not about being perfect. Tanggalin yun na yun sa sarili niyo or sa vocabulary niyo na Christianity is about being perfect, not failing, not doing this, not sinning. Again, wag mo naman ano no, wag mo naman sadyain na magkasala at magkamali. But again, it's not about being perfect, perfect or not failing. But being part of the church, it means like it is about being Christ-like. How God And and acknowledging, no, every day acknowledging the works, transformation, the disciplines of the Lord in us individually, and as a church, so that we can continue to glorify Him and give Him glory. Let me leave you this verse as I end. In Hebrews chapter twelve, verse one to two, uh, summarize it. Summarize what we can do when we experience. Failure, sin, and evil inside the church. It says here. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Lay aside down natin yung every weight and sin that clings closely. Ano ng gagawin natin when we lay aside that? Let us run with endurance the race that set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter. Of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand hand of the throne of God. Two things we should lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely in us, and we should run and focus and look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Wag mong ipokus yung mata mo, yung sarili mo, dung sa mga failures, sa evil, sa sin na meron sa church. Yes, we should be aware of those. Again, sabi ko nga, di ba? Kailangan aware tayo sa mga bagay na yon. But our focus is not on those things, but our focus is on Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. 
And in that way, we could continue to do the will of the Lord in our lives. We will continue to grow individually and as a church. Can we all pray right now uh, before we, uh, before I call Kuya Luno to share to us the power of being part of a church community? Uh, let me pray for us lang at this moment. Lord, thank you for giving us this text, this story of Ananias and Sapphira, Lord, of who you are and what you can do, your character, Lord, and the reality of people failing in the, inside the church and the reality of you doing something to deal with those things inside the church. Lord, our goal is not to focus on the failures and sins and the evil that around us, but our goal is to focus our eyes on you, the author and perfector of our faith. Lord, thank you for reminding us, Lord, that you are doing in something inside us individually and as a church. Lord, I pray, even right now, Lord, you give us the Holy Spirit to reveal, Lord, yung mga sin, even yung failures na pinangahawahan pa rin namin that clings closely to us. Lord, we lay it down to you. We surrender it to you and we focus our eyes onto you. Can we do this right now? On your own word, no? Uh, there's this uh, word or term called repentance. Uh, maybe some of you or most of you heard of it. Repentance. It means turning away from sin and turning to God. Ibig sabihin nun, humingi ka ng kapatawaran sa Panginoon at tinatalikuran mo na yung mga kasalanan na meron ka. And again, sabi ko nga kanina, with the preaching and with the verse that we read, we have tendency to fail. And tayo, nagkasala na tayo. Even right now, Maybe you are sinning, you're living a life of sin. Gusto mo naman magbago, but the enemy is just so powerful in your lives. It, it seems like you can't be free of the hold of the enemy in your life. But this time, I want you to repent to God. Say sorry to God. Kung ano man yung mga kasalanan na naiisip mo ngayon, or yung mga pagkakamali na nagawa mo sa Panginoon, the failure that you did to God, whether you lied to God, you make dishonoring things to God, I want you to pray a prayer of repentance. In your own words, hindi kailangan mahaba, hindi kailangan garbo yung mga salita na gagamitin, but, but in your own words, as if you're talking to your Father in heaven, say a prayer of repentance in this moment. I'll give you a minute or so as we, everyone of us, even us, coaches, uh, uh, say a prayer of repentance. So let's pray. And then I'll go back and pray for everyone of us. Lord, even right now, as a church, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness, Lord. We repent on those things that we did not, that's not honor you, Lord. Lord, we repent as a church. May mga bagay kami, mindsets, wrong mindsets and perspective when it comes to you and the church. Lord, we repent of those things. Lord, and individually, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness for those things that we did against your will. Lord, those things na hindi Lord, kaaya-aya sa paningin mo, Panginoon. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, even right now, I, I speak for freedom and forgiveness for those students, Lord, experiencing, Lord, or being overcome by the enemy and the sin that's in their life. Lord, Lord, I'm declaring their life freedom that comes from you. Lord, freedom that you give, Lord. Freedom that you, Lord, display in the in the cross, Lord. When you die on the cross, you... Uh, for our sin and when you raise from the 
bed, Lord, you prove that you can forgive us and give us new life. Lord, we, I declare that forgiveness and freedom over the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <laughs>
everything in me. Use it for your glory that everyone will see, will hear, will know. That everyone will see, will hear, will know. Lord, maraming salamat, Lord. Even as we end this night with the worship, Lord, declaring that you are the Lord of all. Lord, yun yung nagbibigay ng comfort sa amin. Yun yung nagbibigay ng confidence sa amin, Panginoon, na even though sa buhay na to maraming mga uh, challenges kami na pagdadaanan. But knowing that you are the Lord of all, Lord, alam namin na hindi mo kami pababayaan. Alam namin na patuloy kaming uh, mag-grow sa iyo, Panginoon. Alam namin na patuloy mo kaming babaguhin. Lord, I just wanna declare, Lord God, yung sinasabi ni Coach Adrian kanina na fear of the Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, ang panalangin ko para sa bawat isa sa amin na every day ng buhay namin magkakaroon kami ng takot sa Diyos. Takot sa Diyos dahil alam namin, Panginoon, na grabe yung pagmamahal mo para sa amin. And you want us to live a life not alone, but with people, with church. And you want for us to live a life that is victorious, hindi talunan, Panginoon. Lord, I pray na uh, mabasag sa amin yung, ay, wala nang magbabago sa amin, ganito na talaga ako. Lord, hindi yun totoo. Dahil makapangyarihan ka, Panginoon, at tutulungan mo kaming makapagbago at tutulungan mo kami na mamuhay, Panginoon, na naaayon sa salita mo, na according to your will, Lord, honoring to you, Lord God, a life that is pleasing to you. So, Lord, thank you so much. Let that sink in into our hearts, Lord, and allow us, by your grace, Lord, to live out the life that you have for us, not only as individuals, but as a church community. Maraming salamat, Lord. Thank you. I pray, God, for all these students, Lord. Send people. Send the right people, Lord God, uh, who will help us with our walk with you, who will help us to be strengthened in our relationship with you. Let us uh, not be afraid, Lord, uh, to build relationship. Let us not hold back, Lord, uh, na maging intentional, Lord God, to build with the people, Lord, that you have surrounded us with. So, Lord, thank you. We are giving you all the praises. We are giving you all the glory, Lord, because you deserve it, Lord, dahil napakabuti mo sa bawat isa sa amin. Thank you, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Wow.